Hey guys, so today I want to show you my ancient hunt build for Apocalypse Plus 25 and it's also my general farming build as well. Now before we start I want to quickly apologize a little bit because the video took me so long but I just wanted to take my time here and just test out the build, play it over and over again just to make sure it's a good solid build that I can recommend you guys to also play. Now let's uh, start directly by talking about the items. Now we have the Thundering Quiver, I'm using this one two times and this is basically my core damage engine. Um, then I'm also using a light feather for the rolling and we will go over how these synergize when we talk about the armor and the bow. Um, but let's first talk about our weapon. On our weapon um, I do have not the perfect one. You can see that I tried to grind for a good truth seeker but all those I found they just didn't have the right enchantments. So yeah, I'm stuck with a green soul knife. That is at least kind of what I want. Um, the things I really want to have is Anima Conduit and Prospector on it. Um, why Prospector? We talk about that uh, in a second. Yeah, the artifact boosts damage here and the stunning is just whatever. Um, ideally, I would go with one more Prospector and maybe another damage enchantment like Critical Hit or something along that line. Maybe Leeching, something like this. And then we have uh, the armor. And here we can see the core idea of the build. We're using a Living Vines armor simply because when you roll you also trap mobs nearby you could go for a souls armor that boosts like uh, your soul gathering speed or something but um that's not really necessary and i like this it adds just a little more crowd control um to the build so yeah it also comes with the reduced roll cooldown which is pretty handy as we are rolling a lot and we have the multi-roll enchantment here and we have the can spend emeralds to cheat death enchantment on here. Now the death barter enchantment is really important. I had an earlier version where I had the death barter as a normal enchantment and the cooldown was baked on it and that's where I noticed how powerful the death barter is in Apocalypse Plus 25 and how it enables a really fluent gameplay. This is why we have Prospector here on our weapon um, because I noticed that if you play ranged build since the nerf to Shadow Walker, you can't go completely invulnerable. And even if you use the Shadow Walker to roll around, if you encounter mobs that have deflect and you burst bowstring uh, roll into them, they are very likely to just kill you with one hit. So I had to think of a way around that. You collect 50 emeralds at first, and after you, you got them, you get the buff of the Death Barter. And once you would die, you consume them to not die. And you get healed up, and you also have a shield, and you can directly continue playing. It's not like when you fall off a cliff or when you you would normally die did you respawn somewhere you just keep on living it's, it doesn't reset your character and this is really powerful because then you have an invulnerability shield and you can just kill these deflect packs so that's very important here um, the lightning focus of course is um, increasing the damage of our quivers with the cooldown it's just 38% reduction you can't go wrong with that it helps with the feather helps with the quiver it's just good to have with the multi roll we will trigger um, the enchantment or bow that i will talk about in a second and here we come um, to the bow it's a winter's touch bow we have here multi shot which is pretty important we have burst bowstring which is also very important like when you roll you fire your arrows they are fully charged in case of winter's touch you fire three then and you hit three targets which will mean you fire nine arrows and these nine arrows will trigger your cooldown shot which is ridiculous using the cooldown of your artifacts. And what that means is that whenever you roll, you reset the cooldown of your feather and your thundering quiver. And that is really important because then you can keep spamming those and you have to use two because you have to switch between them. Like when one is active, the other one only starts to have the cooldown. As long as you have one arrow still from the quiver, the cooldown doesn't start. So you have to use two, but the feather is immediately up. And with the feather being immediately up again, you can just spam it and roll again and reduce the cooldown again, and you get the idea. Now the rolling makes your next attack stronger. This one you also don't necessarily need, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. Like this is, it is the dynamo enchantment, and when we encounter bosses, like in the ancient hunts, um, we swap out one lightning quiver for a torment quiver, and then we just one shot them with, with that. But it also works without the torment quiver and the uh, dynamo enchantment. Um, it just is a little bit harder. You have to actually, yeah. <laughs> kill the boss and not just have dynamo and tetromic quiver do it for you but it still works so as you can see i have prepared an ancient hunt already that has the only single boss the seeking flame in it and this is the um, boss that you want to kill to get um, the soul knife um 
yeah, this is, this is the only item that I still really have a bad variant of in my build. I'm going to grind this one, maybe we find a good one here. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it, right? Now this is a great start here, we get some free emeralds at the start to get our death barter up. Because um, the uh, one, one issue with this build is that if you start and encounter a hard pack, um, you don't have any emeralds, so it can be, can be quite difficult then. But as long as you find some and as long as you bring your prospector with you, you should be fine. And now we are all good, we have our death barter and yeah. And just keep rolling here. Now one thing that I forgot to mention about the lightning arrows is actually that um, they bring another utility with it because they shoot lightnings and those lightnings can bounce off the initial target and bounce to further enemies. So you can hit uh, enemies around corners or just enemies that are outside of your, your screen. And that is really helpful to clear large packs of monsters and difficult monsters as well. Now of course um, with this build you can you can also die in, in, in difficult situations like this is definitely not an unkillable build or a broken build or whatever it is just a build that I'm having a lot of fun with. Now we're here and uh, we can uh, spawn ourselves one of the ancient um, mobs here to defeat and we want to have some dynamo stacks, you don't need 13, you just need a couple and you want to replace the quiver that is blacked out. So I'll replace the first one, because you can directly activate this one. And then we just go down here. And as you can see, this is how quickly we can kill a boss with this one. And then you can just swap the Kruger back. And we found a Truth Seeker with sadly wrong enchantments again. And you can see I did the grind for the Truth Seeker quite a lot. Okay, so we're going out again and have a look at the next. Now the thing why I chose this build to be my favorite build is because you can actually move kind of fast throughout the missions and you're not reliant on any melee builds. So you don't use any melee weapons here, you don't have to get into your enemy's face to, to fight them. So it just is a, it is a lot safer than um, conventional builds in that sense. But also we lack of any measures to defend ourselves. We basically have no lifesteal, we only have the um, Anima Conduit on our um, soul knife and that's it. That's all healing we get. Um, but then again, as long as there are enemies around, we move pretty fast and we just keep doing damage. So I don't think that's really necessary. Like, I would lie if I said that I would have not failed an ancient hunt with this build, of course I did. Um, sometimes I just got overwhelmed by a really powerful group of enemies or had an unfortunate start. But as you can see this build works very consistent. The, the higher mob density we have here, the, the better it is. And now you saw the death barter going off and we just vaulted through, killed all the enemies and just kept basically fighting. No real threat to us whatsoever. And there we have it back up again. That is the reason why you want to bring um, the Prospector enchantment on your weapon with you. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to get your uh, to get your death barter up. And as I was about to say, um, with a high density of enemies, you can just be really, really fast as you will be constantly rolling. Um, I had ancient hunts where the mob density was so high that I basically could not stop rolling except if I rolled off a cliff or something. Um, one of the reasons I really dislike this biome is exactly that. But you can see we can also just roll into a creeper's face and uh, we don't really care. We have death barter and we will just die. Like, that's, that's the only issue, like if you get annoyed by falling off the cliff, like that build might be nothing for you. But by playing this build for a while, I kind of get used to it, I have to say. So it's not that bad anymore. Here we are again. 
Um, getting our Tormund Quiver, just then we replace this one. Just roll a couple more times, just to completely save here. And that's it. There we go. You can see this is a very easy build. You only have to swap out one item to kill the bosses. So we don't have to fiddle around with Gong of Weakening and different items and whatsoever. You just have one quiver, that's all. I tried playing um, the build with a Torment Quiver equipped the whole time. The issue with that is that you run out of souls. Now I don't know if you could potentially fix that issue if you would uh, run a souls armor. Oh, that guy just triggered our death barter because we were so low from falling down the cliff the whole time. Um, other than that, I don't know if you could fix the issue by using a um, souls armor that would give you more souls. Um, but you're running out of souls and then you can't activate your torment quiver. So that reduces your damage a lot. Um, but what I found out is that when you're full on souls, uh, you can just swap one of the lightning quivers out for a torment quiver and you will go even faster through the levels. Ah, you basically just want to keep an eye down here on your multi-rolls. Uh, where it tells you how many rolls you have and as long as there's at least one left, you have always enough to just kickstart your engine whenever you encounter enemies. And as you can see, I can just keep rolling and rolling and rolling as long as there are enemies. Okay. I'm, I'm full on, on souls now, so I will just wait for this quiver to have um, its cooldown run out and then I will just um, equip the torment quiver here and I will show you guys how that looks like. So as you can see, this is also a totally fine way to play it, this build. Works just fine, but as soon as you run out of souls, then you should swap back to the um, Thundering Quiver because you will use up your souls very quickly. And you could see the death barter going off again. There was a deflect mob and they triggered my death barter. Just use our potion heal up and I'll swap back to the um, thundering quiver here. And you can see how death barter really is helpful. If you don't die, you don't get reset, you can just keep killing them. Super laid back gameplay with this one and yeah, as you always have death barter, you don't really need to care about uh, falling off the cliff and your health being low when you face an enemy. Because even if you do, you just get invulnerable and you have to collect a couple of emeralds again. But um, to be fair, emeralds should not be an issue anymore since the rework farming for emeralds became so easy. Um, That should not be an issue. Like I've totally lived uh, my ancient hunts off of uh, items that I bought. I basically never went to do a mission. I just went to the to the shopkeepers and just bought the items that I needed for the ancient hunts. Did a couple of refreshes on the shop and that's it. And when you use the prospector enchantment. You just get it up so quickly. They were already through it. Like that was that was super easy, as you could see. And I hope you guys enjoyed this um, build. As I said, this is just my absolutely favorite build of right now. I have a lot of fun playing this build. I hope you guys can get your hands on these items to play this build as well. Now, as that is all for today, I thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.